we're in Walpole and this is the start of the Rainbow Coast Adventure. I'm going. <laughs> Yep, you heard right, the Rainbow Coast. And opening with this drone shot, you can see where the name came from. Bloody beautiful. Okay, so the Rainbow Coast runs along the south coast of Walpole, through Denmark to Albany. You'll get to see Elephant Rocks, the treetop walk, plenty of sand track form of driving, a bit of cooking, and just general all-round good vibes. So kick back with your pina colada, don't get caught in the rain, because that's just silly, and enjoy this adventure. Have you ever heard of the notion of uh, checking your vehicle before you go away somewhere? Well, Taylor hasn't. I have, I swear I have. I was only down a waiter when we left and yeah, she chews a bit of oil sometimes. Yeah, so Taylor lives on the edge. It's like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it till you're in the middle of a small town and it's hard to find diesel engine oil. first stage of this adventure is Blue Hole's track down to Belanga Beach. The start of the track is 15 minutes from Warpole, past a few paddocks of cows. Sound advice, Depot. Real sound. Avoid getting bogged. Will do. Thanks for the heads up. This is Belanger Beach. We've come down the Blue Holes track out of Walpole to get here. I've got a story for you about Belanger Beach and the inlet at Walpole. It's a story of shipwreck. Now this ship was called the Escort and it departed Albany on the 13th of August 1903 at 5.30 p.m. if you want to get precise. Travelling up the coast here with a bunch of supplies from Albany to the settlers at Walpole. Now at the 15th of August it was coming close to Walpole at the Nornalup Inlet. And that's where it struck heavy weather. And that's a problem for ships because, as you can see, that thing's angry enough already. There was heavy rain and squalls, and at the entrance to the Nornalup Inlet, they decided to drop two anchors and try and ride it out. So the four buggers are trying to sleep it out, but on the 16th of August at 1am, one of the chains broke. So at this point they thought, oh, damn, we'd, uh, we'd better get into action mode here. So they put a man at the wheel and stood by the engines. Two hours later, at 3 a.m., they lost the other chain for the anchor. And at this point, they're just kind of hopeless in the sea. On the wheel, motor's going, just trying to dodge the high seas. Now, at the entrance to the Nornalup Inlet, uh, there's a lot of rock, a lot of reef. And these guys rode out the waves, dodging the rock and the reef from 3 a.m. when that second chain broke until 10 a.m. And much to their misfortune, uh, it didn't let up. The squalling winds got worse and at that point the captain decided to put the thing to beach and the reason the captain decided to put it to beach was just to save the lives of the crew so what a top honest bloke at 11 a.m they drew the fires this was a steam powered ship so put the fires out opened up everything to let it fill and sunk the boat right there on the beach so they camped out on the beach there overnight and all of them got rescued so 
happy ending to the story, but if you're a diver and you want to check out a, a wreck, apparently way over there on the other side of the inlet, you can even still see the, the top of this wreck in between the waves as the waves swells sort of dip down, you can see the top of it. We didn't mess around on the beach for too long and the Southern Ocean is bloody freezing, so Taylor is as close as anyone got to a dip. It's time to move on to the next location anyway. So the next stop is Conspicuous Cliffs. Last time I was here was November or December 2017. Uh, it was after winter, so the river was going straight out. It didn't really have this big sandbar here. That just goes to show how different the seasons can be. Now we're here just on the edge of summer. Uh, the plants are doing different things. The river is still running, surprisingly. I, I, I don't miss that big hill. I had to climb back up that thing. That was a pain in the ass. Not doing that. It sure is. Oh, but he's actually... Bloody nice beach down here at Conspicuous Cliff. It's a bit wavy, but you know, it's really nice. I don't think I'll go for a swim just yet though. What do I think of Conspicuous Cliff? I'm just happy not to hike up it with 20 kilos on my back. Conspicuous Cliff, done, seen. Now we're gonna hit the boring old black top, but only for eight kilometers. Then we'll be at the Valley of the Giants treetop walk. It's quite a commercialised area, but it's worth having a look at. So we'll take you for a walk through there. So the fancy architect that constructed this uh, treetop walk designed it like themed by nature, inspired by the tassel flower and sword grass. I want whatever he's having. <laughs> Looks like a bridge to me. So it seems everyone doesn't like heights except for me. It sways a bit, isn't it? I don't have a problem with heights. Oh, Rhiannon's good. Yeah. Danny's shitting himself. <laughs> Danny freaking out a bit of that. I'm doing all right. There? Yeah, no, I'm okay. I certainly couldn't climb any of the, the trees. I tried the Gloucester and I crapped myself when I was about two metres up. Yeah, <laughs> Jake that time. No. Do you remember that time when I climbed the, the diamond tree just out of Manjum up, the Fish Creek Hut video? It's nothing like that. Probably twice as high up, but and it sways a lot. I still feel pretty safe. Now they say this tree is called the tingle for a reason. And now I feel it. Because right now, I'm inside the tingle tree. It's making me feel a little tingle in certain places.
Have you ever seen the air raid fungi? Thirty-eight kilometres from the treetop walk to Parry Beach Road, thereabouts, and it's time to hit the dirt again. Noisy out there, the sound of tyres deflating, going down to beach pressures, not messing around. Mate, priorities, eh? Just dip a clock. Don't get between a man and his dip. The track to Parry Beach is a fun little drive, but I'll let the video do the talking. So we just came down into Quorum Nature Reserve, I think it is, and found this spot called Sharp Rock. Yeah, the rocks are sharp. What an awesome track though. The, uh, you can drive right down to the ocean, but I wouldn't advise it. Um, the track's actually quite hard going. A lot of steep, sandy bits. They've laid down that rubber, the rubber matting for traction, and some real boggy stuff as well. Uh, we passed a guy in an FJ cruiser who said at one of the beaches the rubber matting's all been washed out and you can't get down there and, unless you're a fool, so we'll go and see how foolish we can be, check it out. But just coming up over these crests and all the hills and seeing the ocean pounding away at the granite, loving it. Okay, here we are at the notoriously flogged piece of track. Oh yeah, okay. That's pretty bad. Oh. Yeah, nah. That is nasty. Track closed for a reason. Whoever went down that and somehow got back up must have winched back up it because that's pretty nasty. A little bit of a shame, but uh, getting onto the beach isn't you know, it's not essential to our day's plan. Oh, that's a dried sea cucumber. Ew. So I think we'll head back to the Parry Beach campground and see if we can find somewhere to camp there. Oh damn, it got dark. Anyway, time for a quick meal I reckon and this one is a chickpea curry, a vegan dish actually, because Vegan is healthy. I'm never going vegan. And it's quick and easy as well. So I'm gonna start with the onion. Well, actually I already started by putting the rice on because that bit will take the longest. So rice is boiling away over there and I'm gonna dice an onion. The onion's nice and brown. Now I'm gonna put in the spices. Bit of ginger, fresh in a tube. Go about half a teaspoon of that. Half a teaspoon of, oh no, <laughs> no problem. Probably half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of cumin, two tablespoons, clive of India, authentic curry powder. Fair old whack of that. And then quickly dust it around in the pan. Let it get aromatic. Oh, that is aromatic. 
straight up the nostril. Before it burns, add a tin. Haleyard <laughs> gold diced tomatoes. I'm choking. Woo! What a ride. Guess what? Nearly done already. Can of chickpeas. They don't even need to be cooked, so we're just heating them. And that is what I prepared earlier. Four stalks of kale, which I've sort of roughly sliced up. Got some curry like. Yeah, right. That's going to be a bit of fun to stir through. There we go. That's one vegan chickpea curry. One of the easiest things you'll make when you're camping, I reckon. It's the easiest thing I make at home. Healthy too. Probably the healthiest thing you'll eat while you're camping as well. Take it, Jake. Well, we're awake and we weren't too far from Masaletti Beach. So, as the plan goes, we were going from Parry Beach and you can cruise this whole seven kilometres along the beach. It's the most firm, hard packed sand that any of us have driven on this trip yet. Seven kilometres and we reach an exit to the beach uh, where we are at Elephant Rocks Greens Pool, which is quite a famous location, tourist location out of Denmark. So we're going to set up there and have breakfast. We got on the tracks early and thought it'd be nice to have a bit of brekkie by the pool and have a swim. Time is 7.30. Those cliffs behind me in the distance, that's where Parry Beach campsite is. The Bibbleman track walks through there and then you've got to walk around on the beach here. In November 2017, on that day where I had to hike along this beach, it was extremely windy. Uh, the sand was blowing up in your face. It didn't make for a pleasant journey along the beach in those couple of hours. But coming back at the end of summer, this time of year, it's much more peaceful. And I'm really able to enjoy it much more. Well, I just thought this morning we'd just cook up some bacon, eggs, sausages, and uh, fry up a few of last night's um, baby potatoes, just as a bit of a wholesome start to the day. Made a Sunday. Sunday's always for pancakes, so just doing a pancake cook up using the old shake and bake stuff. And got AeroPress coffee happening over there. Only the best. Cooking eggs, but. That doesn't look like an egg, does it? Not yet. No. I've just put 12 eggs, whisked, whisked them all up, and put them in a bottle so I don't have to worry about freezing them, or the shells cracking, or egg going everywhere. So, easy as pie. Eggs on the single burner on the, on the skillet, in the pan. Just like that. Freezing, but it's definitely one of the better places I've swum at. It's the current status of the nipples. Go on, mate, get versatile. I You're like potholes. I could cut glass. <laughs> can you do that trick where you spin a basketball on them? I reckon I can do that. Do the mental side with the frisbee. Oh, yes. Hell yeah. Who doesn't love a game of nipple frisbee? It's seriously pretty cold in there, but it's magical for a swim. And in case you were wondering, you can't get a four-wheel drive in here. We've left ours parked on the beach just around the corner and walked in. It's well worth the walk to check out Elephant Rocks.
So right now, we're at Green's Pool, and we need to get over here, to the vehicles. Once we're at the vehicles, we've got to go all the way up along Parry Beach, right over to the exit here, where we air up. From Parry Beach, we're off up to the main highway. The highway will take us over to Denmark, all the way over here. As you can see, it's a bit of a drive, and unfortunately, there's no shortcut between Denmark and, as you can see, Green's Pool was kind of right nearby. But hey, 20 minutes is enough for this video, right? I'm sure you've got better things to do. Wash your hair, descale your grey mask kettle, I don't know. Hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on, because next week comes part two. Alex rages about a palmy weight. It's the face of a man that's waited an hour for food. And then we head to the southernmost tip of Western Australia and cook some shit. It's not vegan either, so Isaac Butterfield will be stoked. Oh my god! Hit that like button and we'll see you there.